Hi, and welcome to this training video on updates made to EasyWriter Pro related to insured production reporting, formerly known as Same Year Production Reporting. My name is Ali Skelsky, and I'm a member of the IT Marketing and Training Team. So in this training video, we'll be going over changes made inside of EasyWriter Pro in regards to the required or the expansion of requirements by RMA for additional plans to report insured production reporting. Additional plans at this time include yield protection, revenue protection, revenue protection with harvest price exclusion, actual revenue history, and actual production history plans. In this training video, we will specifically go over where you key this information, reporting information, a little bit of information on acre recertification, and a little bit of information on companion policies. Please note that at this time, Easy Mapping and NEU Country Mobile functionality are in the process of being updated to also support insured production reporting. So to start off, let's talk about where you key insured production reporting. Again, formerly known as Same Year Production Reporting, and inside of Easy Writer Pro, you may uh, refer to it as current year, production reporting as well. Now inside of the system, the quick APH functionality has been updated to support insured production reporting in the system. And you can access what we call the quick APH current year entry window right here by clicking quick APH. Now by clicking quick APH, the defaults of this option, which has been available in the system for other plans that this was required for in the past, has now been changed. When you simply click the icon, it's now gonna bring you in by default to the Quick APH current year entry window. Now you can still use the dropdown if you are familiar with this functionality, and you can certainly select previous year APH if you need to look at previous year or enter previous year APH. Uh, something else that's been added to the system, and I'm going to endorse out this policy and show you what happens if I indeed choose to, maybe by instinct, to go to previous year APH when current year APH is still required. So you can see I get this pop-up. It says current year production has not been keyed in the prior crop year. Please key current year production in the prior year before proceeding. So this pop-up has been put into the system in the event that you are in a policy. And in this case, this is a policy that has been rolled in our system from 2023 to the 2024 system. And if I am here and I accidentally go to enter previous or go into the previous year APH screen and production still needs to be entered in the current year, then I am reminded with the pop-up that I just showed. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this policy in the current year, which is the 2023 policy at this time. So let me go ahead and I am just going to do a quick switch here. And now I am currently in to the 2023 policy for this policy holder. And now I'm gonna go ahead and endorse out the policy. And I'm gonna go ahead and select quick APH. Oh, but before I do that, let me go back to 2024 and I'm going to cancel the commitment. And I'll explain why I did that in a little bit. All right, so back to the 2023 policy. I did endorse out the policy and I'm gonna click on quick APH. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this window so that we can see all the columns and all the information on the screen. So here, some other updates and new features that I'd like to point out, starting with the new banner that you see in yellow that I am hovering nearby. It says, upon commit, current year APH data will be rolled to the subsequent year when possible. So first of all, something to note about this banner is that this message will only appear if the policy has been rolled to the subsequent reinsurance year. Now, if current year production is entered in a policy that is not yet rolled, so basically you will, in situations where you won't see this banner display, uh, not to worry, when the policy is rolled, the production data that was keyed will be rolled to the subsequent year at that time. Additionally, I know that this banner ad also says that current year APH data will be rolled to the subsequent year when possible. Now, there are edge cases and reasons why this process may fail. Now, this is a back-end process that will automatically take place after I enter the production here and then I commit the policy. Again, we have a back-end service that will 
in theory, push that data to the subsequent year um, census policy has been rolled. But on rare occasions, this process may fail. One of those times or situations where this process may fail is if the 2012 2024 policy has been and is currently endorsed out. So that's why I strategically went back and I canceled that endorsement so that when I do commit this, the information will automatically roll forward. Now, there is other less common situations where uh, the data may fail to roll forward. In those situations, a suspense item will be raised for underwriting. So um, your underwriter will be made aware of that at that time. All right, a couple of columns that are new to this window. First one I'll explain is uninsurable reason. Now, if there is uninsurable acres on the policy, the reason will automatically populate in this column. So you will see I don't have this in this particular policy. I'm not in that situation. Nothing's pre-populating here. Now, another thing though to note in relation to this column is that uninsured and uninsurable acres are now required to be reported. Now, production on uninsured or uninsurable acres will show up as a separate line in the screen. And again, in those situations, uninsurable reason will be populated for that particular line. Now, again, in this current example, I am not showing anything here, but I do have a screenshot of a policy in that situation to share with you. So let me transition to it now. So here you can see in this example, um, the uninsurable reason has populated below the line that it belongs to. Um, and this would be the line where you would fill in that uninsurable acreage. All right, back in the policy, I also want to point out this column, which is new. It is titled pre-QL unadjusted total production. Now RMA is asking for this data when possible, even when quality loss or the QL option is not elected on a policy, they still would like this information reported. Now, in some situations, it is not required, at least not per um, Easy Writer Pro, but when the quality loss option is elected on the policy, it will be required and, however, it will automatically populate um, if there is a claim out on the policy. So in those situations, and if timing is correct, the pre-QL unadjusted production will pre-fill. Now also note that the production entered as pre-QL loss unadjusted production will roll to the subsequent year when there is the QL option elected on the policy. All right, so what I need to do here is I am going to key in my production, And I'm gonna go over here and even though it's not pre-populating for me, if I know my pre-QL unadjusted production, it's gonna behoove me to go ahead and type that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in now, which is gonna match. In the event that you go ahead and put in, let's say accidentally you queue in a lesser number, an error is gonna be flagged here. It just lets you know that the pre-QL unadjusted total production let me hover again, <laughs> must be greater than or equal to total production. So let me go ahead and just correct that. All right, you will notice now that the yield type has defaulted to um, actual yield, but we can take a look at the full list here and I will expand this so we can see it all in one place. Now, insured production reporting serves a different purpose than actual production history production reporting. Um, and, and, and in that sense, it's much simpler. Its purpose is to show what is on the production report for a specific year at the end of that year. APH production reporting needs several extra yield type codes to perform calculations and fill in past years of history. Therefore, in insured production reporting or current year, you will notice several fewer yield descriptions available here in the drop down window. Now, production type is next, and it also it actually has a longer list and I'm trying to expand the screen here. There we go. And I still will of course also scroll down slowly as I talk about the production types. Now there were two new production types that have been added to this list recently. First of all, there is this one here that I'm hovering over. It's the, the T or no production. Um, due to unharvested delayed claim or recorded unavailable from a processor, um, not for ARPI. 
Um, the other new option is S, which is right above it here. It's S type or for appraisal. Um, also want to note that the L option here, which is unreported production, P26 only, this is no longer just for ARPI policies. It's been expanded to all here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose A for this. And I'm going to go ahead and move on and key the rest of my information um, quickly. You will notice one other option on the screen is to, is to set production type. So if I wanted to go ahead and just set all my production types, once I keyed in this first one and tabbed away from it, I could have selected this option and it would have automatically pre-filled those for me and saved me a couple of keystrokes. All right, so now that I have everything filled in that is required on the screen, I'm gonna hit save. And now if I go ahead and I commit the policy, and give, give the system just a little bit of time, we can go into the subsequent year, so 2024, and we can see if this information has that I've keyed transferred out. So give me one second and I will commit the policy. And I'm just double checking everything's filled in. You will notice current year production required. right here as my policy status. Now, after production has been entered into Quick APH for all um, coverages on the policy, um, and when I commit, as long as um, current year production received and current year production signed date, um, which prefill, as you can see here, um, have been put into uh, place here, uh, once I go ahead and uh, commit, then the policy status should then um, be changed to complete at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and click commit. Okay, so we're going to give the system just a moment um, into the 2024 policy to see if that information has rolled. Um, while we give the system just a moment, I will go over and talk a little bit about reporting. Now, first of all, I'm going to click over to the report center and a new report has been released with this new functionality. You can see I have it pulled up here. It's the missing current year APH report and it can be found. I'm gonna click back here by going to the underwriting category and PCI subcategory and you'll see it listed right here alphabetically, missing current year APH. So if we take a look at this report, um, you will notice that it is uh, very similar to the missing APH report, uh, but there is a couple of additional columns. There's the current year production reporting um, date column that's listed here as well. And then if I scroll over, you will find a cancellation reason column. So if a policy is canceled in the subsequent year, the reason will display in this column. I also want to go to the dashboard and just point out something that is already in the system but has been updated as well. And under key activities, if I go to production 2023 here and take a look here at the current year production area or this part of the graph, I just want to uh, note to everyone um, that this area of the dashboard has been enhanced to include data for all the newly required policies and plans um, within this graph, which will show, of course, if I hover here, both completed current year production as well as incomplete. So just wanted to point that out as well. All right, let's jump back into 2024. And I am going to go ahead and search for this policy. And now if we go ahead and take a look using the quick APH dropdown and go to previous year APH. You can indeed see that my production information um, went ahead and transferred just that quickly. 
All right. Other things to note in relation to the expansion of insured production reporting, let's talk a little bit about ACRE recertification. So if ACRES are underreported and there is no claim on the policy, all users, including agents, can recertify to correct ACRES in the Quick APH current year entry window. Also like to note, um, a special note about companion policies, you can now transfer your production to companion policies. These policies and units are noted in the system as they usually have been. However, you can now uh, transfer them automatically after the insured production reporting has been entered and upon commit, you should be presented with a message that will allow you to transfer the data to companion policies if you choose to. And you also can use the import option in the companion policy screen. Um, also to go ahead and transfer the data if you choose. Now I am gonna actually jump back to 2023 and jump back into the policy to talk about a couple of document options that have been added to existing documents. So I'm just gonna go here under policy documents. And the first document I would like to show, and this is something I could have of course showed um, upon commit as well, uh, but just the standard APH or actual production history database document. Now these two document options I'm gonna talk about have been available already, but now when I select print as next year's policy and include current year production, and I'll just preview it, And I will zoom in a bit. Now, not only, of course, is this printing as next year's policy, but 2024, but when I go down to where the database is shown, you will see for 2023, indeed, the production that I keyed um, is listed here. So that's one thing we wanted to show in relation to documents and document options. I also am gonna briefly pull up the production report. And one document option has been changed or renamed slightly. You will notice here now the print as next year's policy, this document option now also has a little bit of additional information. It says print as next year's policy, include current year production. So that's been made available. And I'm also gonna go ahead back up here and I'm going to select the ARH revenue and yield report. And just point out that include current year production has been added as a document option there. And last but not least, the renewal packet. Let me scroll down and find that. All right, inside of the renewal packet, and include current year production document option has also been added. So those are some of the um, document um, options slash document changes that have also been released into the system related to um, insured production reporting. Well, that is gonna wrap it up for today's training video. And um, I just wanna thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day.